Welcome back to Pro Rodeo tonight. Early this season, there was a steer wrestler from Iowa by the name of Jacob Edler that seemed to be qualifying for every championship round during the stock show season in January and February. Sure enough, he was in the top 20 in the world standings. And as I congratulated him after a rodeo, I thought, well, there's a guy with a great personality. And then as we had a chance to visit during the Super Series finals in Fort Worth, uh, a little over six weeks ago, I found out this guy has got charisma. He's a people person that absolutely may have been the most excited person to be back in rodeo. Matter of fact, you'll get to see the excitement as this is a great opportunity to point out, oh, he won Prescott, Arizona, moved into the top five. But his reaction after taking the lead at Prescott last week, priceless. As far as uh, knowing that I wanted to be a professional athlete, you know, I, I went through the ranks of high school and, and had some success in Iowa, and I amateur rodeoed all throughout them years and finally won an amateur title my freshman year of college. And then after that, I decided that if, if I'm going to do this, I want to do it on the, the top level. Well, I'm Jacob Edler, and I'm originally from State Center, Iowa. Uh, grew up on a farm. My family, they raised corn, soybeans, alfalfa, corn, hogs. I mean, you name it, we got it over there. And uh, I, I never swung a leg over a horse until I was 14 years old. I just grew up being a farm kid, working, showing livestock, stuff like that. We had an ag day and we had these neighbors. They've always roped calves and bulldogged and we went over there for that ag day and I thought that that was the coolest stuff that I'd ever seen in my life. Every day after I got done working, I would go over there and we'd ride and rope the dummy and they eventually got me on horses and started roping some calves and we, we used to show club lambs all over the country and, and my dad, he was pretty passionate about it, worked a lot of years to get a good program going. I didn't like it at all. When I told him that I was passionate about this rodeo and he saw how hard I worked at it, he was willing to do whatever it took to give me an opportunity to do it and I'll never be able to repay him for it. And, I'm really, really grateful for it. I remember a few months later, I entered my first rodeo in Lenox, Iowa. It was not a productive day at all. I fell off in the boys' breakaway roping into the bucking chutes when my horse turned the corner and I was tracking a calf around. I got off in the goat tie and fell on my face and tied the goat backwards somehow. And then the chute dogging my steer laid on me for the entire 30 second time limit. Most people would have quit rodeoing after they had this traumatic experience I had. I, I had nowhere to go but up from, from that first experience of rodeo. And it seems like I'd plumb start at the bottom but I, I start rising to the top the more I work at it. So it's, it's been an interesting experience, that's for sure. I decided after that day that I was not going to suck that bad ever again in my life. I went to work every day at it. I went to riding every day, roping the dummy. Got to meet the right people there in Iowa and got to practice through the winter. And I've, I've filled my goals as far as amateur goes. And I, I bought my permit and shoot, I've rodeoed in three different circuits. I started out in the Great Lakes circuit and filled my permit there. And I actually moved up to North Dakota, Badland circuit rodeoed for a year. And then after that, I transferred schools in Altus, Oklahoma, and I've been a Prairie Circuit Cowboy ever since after that. Uh, I met Jacob when he was at Alva at college at Hunter Cure's house, actually at a practice. Well, this Iowa farm kid thing was in full effect at that point. I think he still had corn in his truck or something by the time they got done with that one. But he's grown up a lot. He's, uh, he's done good. He's uh, figured out it's a profession. He's figured out that he has to go and just do his job. Bad as it is to say, I'd say when I first met Jacob and he came out here and rodeoed out here, I think Jacob was here to just be here and have a good time and he wanted to enjoy rodeo. And at some point you have to realize it's a job and rodeo is a lot more enjoyable when you win. You get paid when you ride good horses and bulldog good. And he bulldogs really, really good. It was unreal what it did for me. When I got down south and I was able to get hooked up with people that professionally rodeo for a living, it made all the difference. 
Jacob Edler and I were introduced to a mutual friend, Guy Smith, who is a rodeo coach at Altus, Oklahoma for several years. And he called me one day, said that he had a, a student that was wanting to, uh, wanting to put in some work and get better at steer wrestling. So they called me and uh, from that point on, uh, Edler and I have been friends the whole time. So it's been, been a wonderful relationship. Uh, I met Jacob in 2014. He uh, just showed up at the house to Bulldog one day. He's just an Iowa farm boy <laughs> who's a little crazy sometimes. <laughs> Has a pretty positive attitude 60% of the time and then a, maybe a serial killer attitude 40% of the time. <laughs> Edler's never like losing, he likes to win, whether it's at a $20 jackpot or a $20,000 added rodeo. That's a good attitude. As far as my mentality goes, I, I wish sometimes I had a little better cap on my emotions because, you know, when, when I win, it, it entertains everybody and it, it's, it's, it's good. But uh, when I lose, you know, sometimes I can go a little, little too much over the top. And Jacob, he will uh, definitely freak out when it doesn't go well. And those are always entertainment value for sure. But it's a whole lot funner when Jacob does good because you just can't beat the Iowa hat wave and fist pump that occurs after he slams one. The enthusiasm keeps me young, so I like that part. He really, he he's an enthusiastic winner. I, I feel like I've got a little better handle on my emotions before my run. I feel like I used to get a little too worked up before I would go and, uh, you know, I wouldn't have that right kind of focus, be ready to win. And, and now I feel like I've controlled everything and waited to let my emotions show till after I get done bulldogging. Shoot, the guys that I, I look up to, they've, they've all taught me how to win, do good, and they've put me on the right track. Matt Reeves, he's a great guy. He's like your crazy uncle that's pretty insane, but he's extremely intelligent. He's, he's kind of a weird dude, but I have learned a lot from this guy, and me and Matt have become really, really good friends. I know Riley, I showed up in Shakota one day and, and practiced, and we, we've become really good friends. He, he was the first one down here to really uh, allow me to step in and, and go rodeo with him, and I, I got to learn a lot from that guy. That guy taught me a lot about winning. He's, he's gonna be a friend for life. Hunter has been a really big influence in my career, too. That guy really polished up a lot of my technique and got me on track to being more focused and learning how to be a winner and being around a guy that's got two gold buckles, it's it's huge. Last year, I actually rodeoed with him and got to live with him and he, he put me up. I got to be around him, see how a world champion does things, you know, on, on the ranch and the arena and it was just an awesome experience and I will be ever grateful to have Hunter Keir be a part of my life. Matt, Hunter, Riley, I'm really thankful for him. Jacob has had a natural progression. I would like to think that he's asked the right questions along the way and also experienced rodeo all around that good, bad, ugly, and indifferent. I think he's learned from the things that didn't work and he's also uh, trying to blaze that path to making his first NFR and it's exciting to watch. Jacob has, he just, he's learned to ride better and he's learned to win. And it was a growth through the winter. Like I say, you make every short round and you come out of the winter with 25,000, it's one of those things. He's at, almost 35,000 now, and we don't have many rodeos to go to. He's won at the jackpots while we were off, and he just kind of kept going. So he'd like to find his own horse now and make a great horse, and he'd find one that wants to be great, and I think he will. He knows what he's looking for now. He's come a long way since 2014, I'll put it like that. He's handling himself a lot better. He's, he's grown up, and it's showing this year. He's kicking butt. End goal is to ultimately make the the national finals rodeo and continue my career on from there. And I'd, I'd like to see Jacob Edler from State Center, Iowa get red in the Thomas and Mac one time. I may originally be an Iowa corn farmer, but now I've transplanted, I've become an Oki, and uh, I, I am not an Iowa farm boy anymore. Jacob Edler definitely would like to put his name on the list of world champions from Iowa, like Tim O'Connell and Wade Sundell and Colin Von on. By the way, Jacob moved up two spots from the previous week, from seven to number five. As we take a look at the world standings, he is still in that race for a possible world championship for the first time ever. This is his highest ranking. 
Matt Reeves continues to dominate with the help of that win at the American. Jacob Talley has moved to number two and the two-time world champion Tyler Wagglespack number three, while Dakota Eldridge is moving up the ladder as well. When we come back, we'll take a look at the stock market report and find out who had the biggest numbers last week during one of the busiest weeks of the season. Your top bucking horses and bull scores coming up when we come back. <laughs> 